Okay, in this video, we will have um, be discussing the chain rule. Now, the chain rule states that if you have a function of a function, so you basically have a composite function, um, where you have a function of x inside an outer function, then the way you take the derivative of a complex function is you take the derivative of the outer function and you keep the inner function the same and then you multiply by the derivative of the inner function, okay? Um, normally when we see composite functions, we usually see them like this, right? Where the function f is the outer function and the function g is the inner function. And so if I applied the, the chain rule, it would be f prime of g of x times g prime it's another way you'll see the chain rule, okay? So, for instance, this first example here, it says g of x is two parentheses, five minus nine x, close parentheses, raised to the fifth power. What helps is if you identify the inner function and the outer function, okay? So the outer function is actually just two x to the fifth. And the inner function is 5 minus 9x, where this is actually in here, okay? So the way we take the derivative of this is we pretend like what's inside the parentheses is a big giant x, and we take the derivative of this function as if it were an x. Then we just remember that one, it's not an x, and then two, we have to take the derivative of it at the end, okay? So watch here as I try to work this out. So if I were to pretend this is an x, I would just be applying the constant multiple rule and then the power rule. Five times this big giant x raised to the fourth power, okay? But I don't have just an x, I have five minus nine x inside that parentheses. And according to the chain rule, I have to multiply by the derivative of what's inside here. Well, the derivative of five is zero and the derivative of nine x is just nine. So what I really have here is two times five, five minus nine x times negative nine. Or I can multiply the 2, the 5, and the negative 9 together and get negative 90 times 5 minus 9x. Or I could go even further and distribute that and get negative 450 plus 810x. And this is the derivative of that function. Um, oh, it is not correct because I've made a mistake. If you recall, this 5 minus 9x had a fourth power on it. So I can multiply the coefficients in the front, giving me a negative 90. However, I do still have this term raised to the fourth power. Therefore, I cannot distribute the negative 90. You always have to apply exponents before you can apply multiplication. And I'd rather leave that in its current form than to try to expand that out to the fourth power. Okay, example number two. So again, identifying the inner and the outer functions. The inner function is what's inside this parentheses here, x squared minus one. The outer function would be as if the x squared minus one were just big giant x. So it's like the cube root of this big giant x squared, okay? Now I'm going to rewrite that as a big giant x to the two thirds power. So really I could rewrite this function without taking the derivative, just rewriting it as two to the third power. So when I go to try to take the derivative of this function, because it does have an outer function and an inner function, I do need to apply chain rule. 
So I'm going to pretend like it's like this. However, I know it's not x to the 2 thirds. It's actually x squared minus 1 to the 2 thirds. So I'm going to apply my power rule, which is 2 thirds x squared minus 1 to the negative 1 thirds. So I brought down my power and decreased my power by 1. My base stayed exactly the same. But because the base is not x, I have to multiply by the derivative of it causing the chain link. So the derivative of this base is going to be 2x minus 0, or just 2x. So then I get, um, if I multiply this and this together, I get 4x over 3 times x squared minus 1 to the negative 1 third. And then I can rewrite that as 4x over 3, and this goes downstairs, but it's also a cube because of the, um, the cube root because of the fraction. And this is the derivative of the original. Okay, so it's important to recognize the inner and the outer functions. And if you're applying the power rule, you keep the base exactly the same, you just have to multiply by the derivative of that base. The same thing happened up here. I kept my 2 there, brought down my 5, decreased my power by 4, but my base stayed exactly the same. And because my base wasn't just an x, I had to multiply by the derivative of that base.